Begins Star Show, it's back! Hello my friends and viewers and welcome to a new edition of Instar Show. Today we chat with Meredith O'Connor, a young activist for mental health, an iconic in, uh, in anti-bullying, recognized by the United Nations and a promising and emotional singer, a teenager with a big heart and a role model for others. Let's add Meredith here to Instar Show and have a chat and get to know her better. Hello. How are you? I'm I outside am... and I'm so excited to join. Amazing show. Thank you so much for having me on. I wanted to, um, in celebration of getting vaccinated and the world coming back to normal, I'm so excited to talk to you about some upcoming projects and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. It's an honor and a pleasure having you with, uh, with me at the Insta Show. Uh, I'm glad that you could uh, could join. Uh, I want to say sorry if I have some technical issues, but apparently today nothing seems to work in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. This is also my first Instagram live ever. Um, oh wow! First time I'm excited. I, <laughs> I'm actually gonna. Um, oh wait, I can't. I was gonna try to get headphones on so I could hear you, but um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to everyone. And oh, I see some comments. Um, I'm excited to answer any questions you have about the uh, global project that we uh, had some Romanian uh, celebrities mm -hmm. on and um, talk a little bit about, about all that. So it'll be great to yeah. see the, thank you for the love and the comments. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that for sure. First of all, I want to ask you, because I mentioned in the, in the intro that you are a role model, so I want to ask you how is it to be in a position of a role model? How do you express this uh, responsibility in real life? I think it's, um, so I sort of didn't expect to go viral on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was how I first got famous. I was 16 and this song about an ex-boyfriend got a couple million hits and, and my life changed. Ever since then, I, I saw it as a chance to, um, like I sort of remembered being, um, oh, hey Matt. I sort of remembered feeling like, I wish I had a role model who mm -hmm. was bullied and got better. And I sort of wanted to like be the role model that I wish I had um, growing up. And there's a lot of things I wish people told me, right? Like I felt so alone when I was getting bullied. I felt so alone going through um, anxiety. But then I, I learned that, you know, from meeting fans, especially, and from meeting people and students from people every, all around the world, I realized I wasn't alone. So I see this as my chance to tell people things I wish I knew growing up. And it's been the most rewarding part of being a role model is getting to see, uh, meet the people in person who, who've heard the music and got, felt better from it. Exactly. I want to say hello to everybody who joined us. If you have any questions for Meredith, you can write them down in the comment section or you can send them through the box and next to the join, there's a question mark. You can send them there and I will uh, show them in, uh, in the feed during our live. Uh, in the meantime, I want to ask you, do you think that mental health is, uh, like, as a topic, is fairly represented in the media as it should? Well, I have to say, like, my experience with the media has been, um, I mean, there's there's good and, and bad. I think the great part is, especially, like, with yourself doing this show, um, the conversation on mental health has, has grown. And... The talking about it has grown and I think the stigma against it like people will break their arms and get support but if you have anxiety or depression a lot of times people don't know what that is but I think because of a lot of um, a lot of celebrity friends of mine like we came together for this song and, and this show that you're doing I think talking about it has really made people um, less afraid to get help for depression and to get help for anxiety so I think the media talking about it the way you know the way we are now has been mm -hmm. um, really helpful for, for people who otherwise would stay silent and wouldn't get help. True. I also want to encourage because I, I I do watch a lot of TikToks in the last week. I did watch a lot. I didn't watch before TikTok. I mean, I know it exists, but I, I wasn't that active. And I tried it. I started to watch a lot of TikToks, and I see a lot of videos where people are like depressed or crying or. Uh, you know, sad in general, 
And I always like to post, even if it's just me in the comments, I just like to post a comment of encouragement. And I always say to everybody, even my friends, like, if you see somebody sad, just say hi or thank you for existing or whatever. Just say something to that person. You'll make the, the, the day and you never know her life or his life even better. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's a really good point. Like, even even if it's um, just pointing it out and, and just talking about it, I think, like, when you feel alone, like, when I didn't know other people had anxiety, I mm -hmm. was so scared, right? Like, I felt hopeless. I didn't know it could get better. And then when I see someone, like, when I met somebody or, like, when I would say, here, hundreds of thousands of people message me and say, like, oh, that happened to me, too it was sort of like, you know, feeling alone and feeling isolated and feeling scared makes it so much harder and no one deserves to go through that. So when I got those messages, I was kind of like, wow, I, it's my job to make sure people know they're not alone. So I think that, that making those posts and talking about it, like you said, is really important because it kind of shows people that no matter where you are in the world, whether it's Romania, you know, or whether it's Brazil or um, regardless of, you know, there's all different forms of cultures and stigmas that exist on mental health, but um, you're not alone in going through it. And I think that that message, um, you know, no one deserves to feel alone. Exactly. How do you think that, how, and how can young people, in your opinion, particularly those who struggle to balance, I don't know, school and social life improve their well-being? Um, oh, I see in the comments. Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, I was asking how do you think that young people, particularly those who struggle with uh, to, to balance school and, you know, social life can improve their well-being? Because so I, I think a lot of bullying happens at school or when we are young. Yeah, so how do I think it can be for young kids, you said? Yeah, how do you think they can manage to improve that? Yeah, so like I think, I think self-esteem is really important. Um, you know, I think that there's going to be a bunch of people that will tell you, uh, they might say like, oh, you're too tall, or at least for me, I was too tall, right? Until I learned that being tall is okay. You know, I, I mm. ironically, I was, eventually I started modeling when I was 14 because of my height. And that was a great, that was like the first time I realized that just because someone says something's bad about you doesn't mean it's bad. Um, so I think that the most important lesson kids can have is if they're getting bullied, um, it's easy to internalize it. It's easy to think, you know, everyone thinks I'm bad, so I'm bad, right? But that's not true. You know, a hundred kids in, in uh, 114 year olds who, who could tell another 14 year old that we don't like you, she's going to feel bad about herself. But I think the most important thing is for her to stay strong. And this is just one person as an example, but like for that person who's getting bullied to realize mm -hmm. it's not their fault and to realize that the things that make them unique are beautiful. So my advice is if you're lucky enough to be different, don't ever change. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me that when I was a kid. <laughs> thank you, yeah, I, me too. <laughs> um, thank you to so be honest, uh, when I was a kid and I was, you know, everybody went to school, uh, even though no, not everybody has the chance and opportunity to, to go to school. When I was a, a kid, I. I wasn't getting bullied and people tried, but I, I wasn't allowed them because I was just ignoring them. And mm -hmm. me being in the, in the front, like, ignoring them made them even mad. And at a certain yeah. point, yeah. we're like, okay, you know what, fuck that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste my energy in trying to bully somebody who doesn't care. <laughs> so they stop. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, but, <laughs> and that's actually really, really amazing. I feel like what you were able to do by not caring is a, is a really good tool. Like for some people, that's what they have to work towards um, yeah. to get to, to be okay. Like it, for me, it was hard because my mom told me I was beautiful. Okay. But like, well, that you doesn't are. really count. She wasn't lying. That didn't count. You know what I, mean? like, I didn't listen to that. You know, I listened to the other kids who would say I wasn't right. I yeah. would, all the other kids who would say all these things. I was like, Oh, well, if they're saying it, it must be true. So that was sort of for me, what I, what was hardest for me to, to not believing what other people would say. And I think when you're dealing with someone so young, it's very easy for them to care a lot about what their friends say. But if you exactly what you said, like if you're able to ignore it, right, then the people bullying you have no power. Yeah. And that's, and that's what they're trying to do. It's not because you're bad. I think that's the big thing. Like it's not because you were bad. You didn't get bullied. It wasn't your fault for getting bullied. It was their fault for doing it. Um, 
but it's hard to it's hard sometimes it's very easy for kids to believe the kids bullying them true what what role do you think that adults namely those in education and i don't know government positions could play a role or what can they do to to help uh, fight the stigma of mental health in kids in bullying um so i think that something that kids could do um so i think we should, we need to normalize being different and like thinking differently so like if somebody has anxiety if somebody has compulsions you know ocd is when you do compulsions or when you have intrusive thoughts right like if somebody has a condition a mental condition i think it's sort of your the friend's job to be there for them the same way they would like have you ever seen someone sign a cast if someone like breaks their arm and then you write your your name on their cast you put yeah. a smiley face or something like that like i think what needs to happen is we need to create a kind of normalize signing the cast you know showing that support as if it was a physical illness even though it's mental and you can't see mm-hmm. it i think if friends can be a more understanding and and really be there for each other um that will help someone going through bullying someone going through depression i think that can really help someone who otherwise might feel alone so my job as a singer in the you are not alone project was to recognize like that people were listening people thought you know knew my music and take some of the biggest celebrities like in in Romania like Ileana Ber um I don't want to pronounce mispronounce her name but she's one Very of the great. biggest stars yes she is amazing her fans seeing her on the song right and the fans of Ricardo Banks from from Nigeria seeing him on the phone and uh, on the phone on the song and um Rogero of course he's got like 10 million fans from all over the world I mean he's one of the biggest stars in Argentina I mean you have and Minzy from K-pop I mean you have all these yeah. people coming together to show so you have Rebecca their... Black if I'm not wrong right What happened You you also have Rebecca Black on the song right Yes she's she's I she's also another one and of course um Mary Wilson who recently unfortunately yeah. passed um the one of music's biggest um icons and and Abbas Jafar I mean just basically the idea is fans from different ages and cultures um seeing them represented by a celebrity from their country I hope I hope can give people the feeling that it can get better and that was what I kind of wanted to do with this song and I feel like as a role model like what you would ask him before I feel like that's and as the media I feel like we're doing it, it's our job to um to spread these messages for people who need to hear them Well, so what do you think or what advice do you have for for people even kids or adults because sometimes even adults they get bullied and uh, what do you think what advice would you give them in in a way to be able to uh, try say recover their life I don't I'm not sure if it's the right term but what advice would you give them to what to to be able to recover their life to be to be okay with whoever they are and to I don't know. Don't care about the bullies. Yeah, I well I so I think having um examples can really help, right? Like for me I look at someone mm-hmm. like Elon Musk who also talks about how he was bullied, right? And you talk about people who um went through like who got made fun of for the things that made them different. I like to share how the thing that got made me made fun of, right? Like the first thing was um when i started modeling i was getting um when i started modeling i was basically prior to that being made fun of for my height so that was the first example of how if you're lucky enough to be different don't change so i feel like that's something that kids should remember um who are different who are being picked on for being different or who are being picked on for bullied for anything um it's really important to know that it's not your fault and that would be my advice um and to continue to have dreams and believe in the things you're passionate about because that can get you through the darkest of times. Now let's let's get back to your music. Um and let's talk about you you're not alone. Uh, how did it all start? I mean, how did you manage to get so many personal personas, so many celebrities on the uh-huh. song and like to this day I it? don't even <laughs> I don't even know. No, um No, that's a bad. I'm kidding. Um <laughs> I it was 
it was really cool. It was really, when I tell you I'm surprised at, I don't know, I mean, my whole career has sort of been surprised, has been me being surprised at how many other people kind of experience the same stuff um, that I thought I was the only one doing. So like, I didn't know that people from all different cultures would have such um, similar y y universal kind of experiences um, in the sense that somebody from one of the biggest stars in Afropop to K-pop, I mean, coming together for this song, it started with me um, wanting that, me wanting different, you know, representation is so important, I think, you know, people yeah. who um, see someone that, that comes from, from their culture or something like that, you know, it, it really is an important um, symbol for people to relate to a message. And I feel like that is something that Hollywood is, is um, we always have those conversations and that's sort of what is what started the idea. Um, also the fans that have taught me that I'm not alone was also sort of what made me like, I want people to know they're not alone. So the first celebrities that joined were actually Mary Wilson. Um, she is such a, she was such an honorable, like not only an icon um, by changing music history with the Supremes and everything she's done, but she really wanted to help children use her platform for that. Um, so, so she joined the song and that was, she was one of the first people. And then Regero was also one of the first people who um, is from the Disney show Soy Luna. Mm -hmm. And he, um, and he's from Argentina. Um, he's also from Italy. So he, he really brought so much to this project and I'm so grateful for his participation. And after that, then we had, um, you know, Minzy, Ricardo Banks, we had uh, Uliana. Uh, we, we had just such a great response from such a diverse, like amount of people from different parts yeah. of the world. Um, so that's sort of been, I think, my favorite part of, of this. And during COVID, um, having the chance to, you know, we didn't really have to worry about seeing each other in person or touring or any of those logistics. Um, we just sort of did it all virtually. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, good to see you. Um, so we did it all sort of virtually. And that was kind of uh, how COVID actually inspired this idea. And uh, what well, what are your sources of uh, inspiration when we talk about music and your artistic side? I'm sorry, say that again. What are your sources of uh, inspiration when we talk about music and your artistic side? Why not just music? Yeah. Um. So I feel like a lot of the inspiration was like I don't know. I, I started when I wasn't like I have ADHD, so being bad at school or like not being able to pay attention mm -hmm. to like, you know, I, I wasn't a great test taker and this and that. So, but I was in a theater company and I would get like the leads in that. Right. And it was something I was good at. So I feel like my inspiration for um, all of this stuff came from passion to pursue, pursue what I was good at and what I was passionate about. And, you know, Queen, um, I think Queen was a big inspiration musically. Uh, Taylor Swift, of course, because the first song I wrote was about a former breakup. Um, so I think having that big response and having the fans, like having people ask for my like autograph and selfies and this and that is what really then inspired me to be like, you know, this is my chance to be the role model that I wish I had. Um, and oh my gosh, Julia, I miss you too. She, shout out to Julia. She's been amazing. Um, and is doing some amazing stuff. Um, so glad you joined. But yeah, so that's sort of what inspired me and, and that's sort of why I started writing the anti-bullying stuff right after I had that first song go viral. Um, because I was like, at that time, it wasn't, you know, music executives told me, don't do it, don't talk about it, don't this, don't that. And I was sort of like, you know. Somebody has to. <laughs> someone has to. And, and now, but I think it's sort of interesting because like now, like you would talk about like mental health. Oh, how do you do? Um, mental health is, sorry, I'm ADHD. I look at comments. Um, but like, yeah, mental health has been a thing that now is more talked about. And so now I think other celebrities really reached out to me and they're like, we love the anti-bullying message. And then we worked with Garrett Clayton and did some other awesome, um, and, and it, yeah, and I've gotten some, some really inspirational messages that have like, uh, that have really inspired me throughout the years. And Julie is one of the people that I've seen that I think is awesome. And, um, and I've seen some other comments here too. So thank you guys for writing such awesome things.
this is my first i'm so bad at instagram live i don't know how it works <laughs> uh what uh, what projects are you currently involved in what uh, do you have in stock for the near future you mentioned something uh, about uh, your new projects at the beginning of our uh, sorry talk. let me can you go ahead and ask that again i um what uh, what projects do you do you have uh, currently in stock and what are you involved in what's what's what happens with you in the near future what can we expect yes so there is a um so the thing that i'm working on now is what i can say is um you are not you have you are not alone has some very exciting plans um when touring becomes a thing one of the plans will involve that um mm -hmm. and <laughs> so everything sort of early stages but we do plan to collaborate with um a artist that you guys may know and i am very excited to announce that as well um and i am also really looking forward to this is mental health month so we will be doing an, an appearance on this is 50 um in a couple days and um i'm really excited to be able to talk about more so i right now i'm working with heather holly on a new project that will be um that will be based on working with the artist that that I mentioned. <laughs> and what well, would I know? Miss Ko, would I know that artist? Julia's asking. I think you know it, Julia. <laughs> oh, Heather Holly. Yes, Heather Holly's been my longtime co-writer. Thank you, Julia. She's Heather, she's been um with me for like ever. So, she helped me write You Are Not Alone as well. Uh, one UK Barham is asking how big of an inspiration was Fat Guy on your lyrics. R.I.P. Um, my cat died. My cat was. Oh, it's your stripes. cat. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your cat. Stripes was actually. It's a good question. Um, stripes was a saw. Uh, was my. Stripes was the best cat in the world. He, he was, he was a fat cat. Um, and. He had a nickname of that, um, so I miss him very much. Um, their song "Guardian Angel," you know, you have to think of all the things in your life. Anyway, that yeah, that was just a question about my cat, who is amazing. I could go on about stripes, but <laughs> that's. <laughs> I love cats. I'm, I I love all animals, but cats are something that is like so fluffy and cuddly and lovely. And, I know there's. <laughs> Okay, so there's like scientific research that like cats help calm you down, like they're purring or something is like soothing. Mm -hmm. I don't listen. I believe it. I you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, only if you look at a cat, you're like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My last question for you, Meredith, is what is the message that Meredith O'Connor from the present has and wants to share to Meredith O'Connor from the future? Oh my gosh, Julia, that's awesome. Kittens are my life. I love them. And what message do I have for I'm so sorry. What was the last part? Uh what message Julia or uh, Julia for Meredith Connor from uh, the present has for Meredith Connor for the future. So the past Meredith to the, the so the message for the past The present Meredith, Meredith to the future Meredith. Oh. <laughs> so the present Meredith to the past Meredith or to future Meredith? I'm so to sorry. To the future Meredith. To future Meredith. To future Meredith. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I am having trouble. There's like a lot. Okay. So the future Meredith, I would say, um, so to the future Meredith, I would say that it's, you know, it's important to continue to emphasize how much representation is important in entertainment. Um, and, it's important to continue to use your voice to be the role model that you wish you had, but also amplify, um, amplify other stories um, mm -hmm. because they really do inspire um, people watching. And I think that speaks to film. I think that speaks to, um, I think that speaks to, it's relevant in Hollywood, it's relevant in music and it's relevant in the record label, the music executive industry, which, um, you know, in my experience in this industry, I would say, I would continue to remind myself how important it is to amplify um, voices of people who can inspire fans. Every time I ask this question, I think it's a very hard question because I've never answered it myself. <laughs> never. Really? I'm, so this is the first time I've gotten a hard question where I felt like I gave a good answer. 
usually, <laughs> usually like after an interview, I spend the next like 20 minutes thinking about a much better answer. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I've, I, I think I've asked this question a hundred times in a hundred interviews since April last year, but I've never answered it for myself, ever. What would it <laughs> I think be? I'm well, gonna do it. To. I don't know. <laughs> One of these days you'll be like, wait, I thought of it. Yeah, I just want to be sure that when I answer it and I get it on camera, after two years, I'll be like, yeah, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so That's much. Good point. I have a, well, what's funny is I have a tape from when I was like eight years old mm -hmm. saying that my favorite color, color better still be blue. Um, it's changed to turquoise, but other than that, I think I've, I've stuck to a lot of what, what I wanted. So um, that's a really good idea, you know, make yourself like a future video. Yeah, like I, I remember when I was in high school, I think, I think it was in high school, right? I'm not even sure. Or well, before that. Anyways, that was, that was very little. We put like a time capsule, you know, inside the, the ground. Yeah. And oh my God, that's true. I took it out. And I remember what I said that my favorite color is black. And it, it's true. It, it's still today black. <laughs> like, that's, oh wow. That's, it's black. I think black is, black is an underrated color. Like when people say favorite color, like they don't think, you know, like you can't, like that doesn't count. It's like, yeah, no, that doesn't yeah. count. And I think it's highly underrated. I, that's the best color to paint your nails, I think. <laughs> On top, not underneath. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Meridian, for being Thank here you. with me today. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Get uh, uh, good luck with all your projects. And hopefully, Thank if you. you start touring with You're Not Alone, hopefully we'll see you in Romania as well. Likewise, thank you so much for, for taking, uh, for just having this conversation and continuing this awesome work. I love the show and I'm happy to, uh, thank you so much. To come on it. All right. Thank you thank very you much. All. And thank you guys for chiming in. And, and I'm, it's so good to see some of the people commenting. I haven't seen you guys in like forever. Um, and I hope everybody's doing well and, uh, and stay strong. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Meredith. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>